So now we're going to be joined by Professor Richard Bargett from Manchester University and he is going to tell us about the whole interaction between the organisms and their diverse ecology and how they interact at all the different trophic levels in the soil. Thank you very much Rich, for coming along today uh, for in conversation about soil and soil biodiversity. You're Professor of Ecology at Manchester at the moment and before that you were at Lancaster and before that you did a degree in soil and land resource science at Newcastle. So you've had quite a successful career working in soil and discipline of soil and ecology. What is it about soil that really made you want to devote much of your career to that subject? Well, that's quite, that's quite a difficult question to answer in a lot of ways. But what I do distinctly remember is I, I was brought up very close to the Lake District in Cumbria. Um, and as a child, we spent a lot of time in the Lake District. And I, and I actually distinctly remember the, the sort of smell of the soils. It might sound a bit odd, but I do as a child. I remember the actual odour of the, the soils in that particular area. And it was really when I was at school, I, I had a job of a teacher called Eric Rigg. Um, and Eric taught us about soils and about the geography of soils. And, and I, I can't remember why, but for some reason that sort of grabbed me. And then when I was looking for courses at university, I remember wondering what to do and I was thinking about doing geography. But then I saw this course at Newcastle on soil and land resource science. And, and I didn't hesitate, I applied. And fortunately they gave me a position and I carried on. And really that's what got me you know, interested in the soils. That's fantastic. And so much the discipline has benefited from that interest, Richard. Okay. <laughs> and this we're talking about is soil biodiversity. Now, biodiversity is a word that is not totally understood by the general public, mm -hmm. and neither really is the word soil. Can you maybe define that term for us today? Yeah, I, I can see how it's people use it in different contexts and rarely define specifically what it is. And I guess to me it's really the variety of life in soil. So it's the range of species, the genes, the species, and also the sort of variety of the actual communities that exist in soil, because there's a whole variety of different networks, ecological interactions between the organisms. So to me, when I say biodiversity in soil, I'm referring really to that complexity or web of interactions that occur in soil between the different species. So that to me is what biodiversity is. And you're also very um, interested in the understanding of how the environment impacts on that whole range of different trophic mm. levels in the soil. How do you think, what are the main threats in terms of environmental change that will impact on that soil biodiversity? Well, I think one of the things I, I will certainly be talking about later is that microorganisms and animals in soil are very susceptible to land use change. For example, I would say that is probably one of the biggest threats, if you like, or one of the biggest factors that can influence soil biodiversity. But I think also climate change is a key area. Um, in particular, extreme climatic events, drought, for example, floods, all these different factors can have quite significant impacts on the diversity of life in soil. But on top of that, there's things like nitrogen deposition, sealing of ground in cities, uh, invasive species. There's a whole myriad of these different factors. And I guess what research is really starting to show is that different types of organisms vary in their susceptibility to these stresses. But one thing is that they all certainly cause changes in the diversity of organisms in the soil. And you've done a lot of research, and particularly on grassland ecosystems. Mm -hmm. But which ecosystems and which areas of the world do you think have the biggest problems currently? Well, I, I would say in, in the UK, I think there are issues which we might talk about later. But on the whole, I'd say in the UK, we're, we're, our soils are relatively fertile, I would say. Um, the big issues, I would say, are in places like China, um, we were doing work recently on the Qinghai Plateau, which is on the Tibet Plateau in China. And there it's an area about five times the size of France and about 50% of the land is degraded. So these are harsh environments where changes in land management, changes in climate can have very strong effects on the soil and the diversity within it. And I would also say places like Africa and Australia, where the soils are much older, they've been formed over millions of years, so they're already nutrient depleted, so the way we manage the land can have very strong effects. So to me, that's really where the big global issues are in these much older ecosystems in other parts of the world. 
So what can we do to protect those soils so that these problems don't become worse, in fact? Well, I think, I think there's a myriad of things that can be done. I mean, number one to me is increasing awareness of the importance of soil. To me, soil needs to be seen much more as an investment, um, both for the farmer but also for the general public, in that this is a resource, it's non-renewable, if we lose it, it's gone forever. So I think there needs to be a real change in awareness, mm. both in the way we manage the land but also in policy. But also we have scientific understanding from the past, but also new science that can help us really sort of tailor the way we manage soil to actually restore fertility, but then maintain it in the longer term. So it's really a sort of combination, I think, of general common sense and knowledge from the past, sort of linked with new science that can really help us fine tune how best to manage our soils. So you said we're in a fairly good situation in the United Kingdom, but where do you think are the areas that we should be concerned about for the UK soils? Yeah, I say that not suggesting that um, we don't have soil problems, because I think we certainly can't be complacent. Um, I think one thing about British soils is they're relatively young. Um, most of them have formed since the last ice age. So they're relatively young and as a consequence they're relatively fertile. But we have issues, um, I would say the biggest issues are things like soil erosion, from intensive arable agriculture, um, particularly at times like recently where we've had catastrophic rainfall events which cause great impact on soil erosion. Another area is uh, climate change and our peatlands, for example, and how we manage the peatlands. They seem to be two key areas, I think, where we have major threats to, to our soils. So how do we go about better protecting and enhancing these particular soils? Well, to me, as I said before, I think, I think there needs to be, a lot of this to me about managing soils is actually common sense. Um, you know, we, we have a long history of uh, knowledge of managing soils right back to uh, Egyptian times, for example, and Greek times. So a, a lot of it is, I think, common sense and that knowledge is there. But I think it needs to be, that knowledge needs to be integrated more into management. And also, as I said before, we need to be able to use the new science because we also have big gaps in understanding about how soils respond to environmental change, what makes them more able to cope with rapid environmental change, and how we can fine-tune crops, for example, to maximise the beneficial organisms in the soil. So it really, to me, is, as I said before, a, a sort of mix of policy and awareness with new science and integration of that science. But I think the new science is only useful if it can actually be transferred to land use farming systems and, and at the moment I, I think a lot of it doesn't and that's another thing that I think we need to work on is how best to get that science into practical farming. And this is, about, this is a conversation about soil biodiversity and it's the soil organisms that make up that biodiversity mm -hmm. but can you say which one might be your favourite? Yeah, very easy actually. Um, to me, it's a calendula. Um, it's called Onicurus procampatus, or at least it used to be. And the reason why I like it is probably because I spent a lot of my life working with it. Um, I did my PhD on this calendula, and then subsequent work at um, grassland sites quite close to here in Scotland. Um, so I, I, I have quite a lot of connection with this animal, mainly because I spent so much time looking at it down the microscope and collecting it from the soil. So. It was a tough relationship at times and it was quite strained because it was hard work, but um, that's the species and the uh, organism I'd say is my favourite. Also known as the common springtail. Absolutely. Can you maybe just tell us a little bit about your new book, uh, Richard, while yeah. we got you here? And tell us what really was your drive to write that book? Well, this, I mean, it's a, it's a book, it's, it's called Earth Matters. Uh, that, I mean, it's really a book about what I was saying before. It's about raising awareness about the importance of soils. So it's really written from a, a human context, so I'm writing about the different ways, often unexpected ways, that soils impact on our lives in cities, in war, through growing wine, through producing food, and this goes on and on. So really that's the sort of overall goal, is to sort of raise awareness about the importance of soils to people who perhaps wouldn't appreciate that in normal life. And the sort of motivation for it was, I mean, again, I can sort of trace it quite clearly in that I, I actually went to London to give a presentation. I think I mentioned it before. And um, it was on a Friday evening in London. And I remember going there thinking, why on earth would anyone want to know about soil in London on a Friday evening? I certainly wouldn't if I was in London. But I went there and there was, there was, a, there was a very good audience. And what really struck me was the 
sort of lack of information that the general public had about souls, but also there was a real thirst for knowledge. I mean, to put this into perspective, it wasn't that many people. There was a small group, but they were very keen. And it, it just made me think, as I walked away, that um, that seemed like a good thing to work on, to sort of raise awareness of the importance of soil. So that was the motivation. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for coming along. And good luck with the book and the communication of soil science. Thank, thank you very you. much.